Do you have bills that you want to enter into QuickBooks? And maybe you even want to pay with a check or a credit card, but you're wondering, what is the proper process for that? It's actually a common question I get asked. So I wanted to create this video with you in mind. Are you ready? If we've never met before, hi, I'm Candace Camper, and I love to help business owners and bookkeepers create confidence with QuickBooks. And today we're diving in to QuickBooks Desktop, all about how to enter your bills and properly pay them. If you're looking for the online version, go up above or down below. I will link them there for you. So you ready? Grab a pen and paper, let's jump in. So when you're thinking about entering your bill, remember, you don't need to be using all features in QuickBooks. So I wanna talk about the benefits of entering bills and you can decide if it's what you need or not. And then I'll teach you how to do it. Sound good? All right, so remember, enter bills is a two-step process in QuickBooks. You enter the bill and then you pay the bill. Especially for desktop, you need to pay it properly. Why? Because if you don't and you enter the bill and then you make a regular check, you'll actually enter the expense in twice, all right? And you'll have mistakes that you then gotta go back and clean up, which you don't wanna have to do. So the thing I wanna start with is knowing why would you wanna enter bills? It's because entering bills gives you a way to track who you owe, so you have the benefit of your accrual-based business of entering your bills. It will show up on the date on your profit and loss that you entered it. So that's the benefit if you're an accrual-based business, okay? If you're in a cash-based business, it won't show up until you pay the bill. Okay, so the money, the moment money's exchanged. If you'd like to know more about cash versus cruel and the A to Z's of QuickBooks, I'd highly recommend checking out our Confidence with QuickBooks program. It walks you through all of this, okay? Now let's dive into the reports that you're gonna get when you create accounts payable. So you're gonna go into reports, vendors and payables, accounts payable summary. And what this will give you is all the transactions that you owe, and it's through different date ranges. So this is a sample file, so there's different things in here. But let's enter in another bill, okay? Are you ready? All right. So to be able to get that report, there's different reports that you can enter. The other thing is, is the more data you give QuickBooks, the more data you have to pull reports based off. So by using the inner bills feature, not only can you get the reports, but there's other reports that you can get as well that track invoice numbers and different things. Now, if you are a smaller business and you aren't accrual based, you're not filing tax on accrual. If you're behind on your data entry, you're just trying to keep caught up. This is not the feature for you. You'd be better to go straight to write checks or enter credit card charge if you're paying with credit card. Unless you're using inventory, you have more time or you're accrual based, not the feature for you. I just want to serve you by telling you that um, because, you know, that's what you need, right? Somebody's saving you time. All right, so you're going to come over here and you're going to choose the vendor. Remember, vendors are the people and places you spend money. If you have a customer who's the same name as a vendor, make sure you set up an actual vendor when you're paying them for products or services that you are purchasing, okay? So you're going to come down here. Let's do one for the city. And you're going to come in here and you're going to pick city or whatever your bill is or the vendor that you want to pay. You're going to enter in the date that you want to enter it for. Reference number is going to be the invoice number, the bill number. Then you're going to put in the amount. Let's just make it $100 even just to keep it simple. Terms here are going to be due upon receipt. It says if it's on the 15th of December, you owe it on the 15th. You can move this out to say 15 days and you'll see there's 15 more days before it's due. This is giving you the benefit of knowing when you're gonna owe somebody by giving you a report for that. So that's the benefit of having these different terms. They'll also do discounts. So say if you pay it off 1% in 10 days, you get a 1% discount if you pay it off in 10 days, or if you wait 30, you pay the full amount. So you can add that there as well, okay? So for this example, we'll keep it simple. We'll just do due upon receipt. Then down here under account, this is where you'd put what it's for. So let's say that it's utilities and it's for gas and electric, okay? So utilities is the main account, sub account. Why does this matter? Because this is what's gonna show up on your profit and loss as the type of expense that you're paying this $100 for, okay? You can enter and split it between different line items if you need to. If you also are paying them for utilities for water and you had 75 going here, 
and 25 here, you can always split it. So on any expense, you can split it between. On this one, we're gonna keep it super simple by just saying 100. I'm gonna go up here, go to edit, and delete that extra line because I don't need it. There's a little extra bonus tip for you, okay? So you can add in your memo here. You can add in your memo there as well. If it's for a specific job that you wanna do job costing with or you wanna track, you can put that here. If you wanna build the customer, you put that there. Remember I said, if you're looking for additional training on all the how-tos, the A to Zs, I check out Confidence with QuickBooks, okay? That's my training program. Here is going to be if you're using classes. If you are using items, instead of going straight to expense, say you have inventory or things that you're using, services even that you're tracking both the expense and the income side of it, you would choose those here under items. Sometimes people are using inventory and they think they just need to go to expense. They wonder why it's not working properly. It's because you wanna, if you're using items, make sure um, on your invoice, you wanna make sure that you enter it here under the bill, okay? So you're gonna go through, you're gonna enter all of your bill. You'll see there's some extra stuff that happens up here as well. And if you receive the bill, you check this off. This is mainly used if you have inventory, okay? You also see a summary of the, the vendor details here and transactions to the right. Don't be scared to click around in QuickBooks. Check it out. That's how you're gonna learn anything. We're gonna go ahead and click yes. We're updating the terms and conditions because I messed with that a little bit in our training. Now, when we go over to our report and we go down to vendors and payables and we go down to accounts payable summary, we will see our city of Middlefield for $100 right there, okay? So we entered in a bill. Now let's go through the process of how do you pay it? Remember I said super important that when you enter a bill that you use the pay bills feature in QuickBooks to pay it. So I'm gonna click pay bills. You can choose how it sorts it here at the top. We're just gonna click show all for now. We are going to find our city of Middlefield here, our reference number, our bill, and the amount we're gonna pay. Now, if you do have credits, you would come down here to the bottom, set your credits, set your discount, or if you wanna go see the bill down here, you can click go to bill, and it'll actually pull up the bill in case you made any errors on your data entry when you go to pay it. If you're paying only part of the bill, you can actually change the amount here. You just type it in. You just always want it to be the exact same amount that you're paying, okay? So if you did it in a couple installments, Make sure, or through different checks, you do that there. I've explained these. Um, you're gonna put in the date that you paid it. You can type it in. You can always click the little arrow as well, or the little calendar. You can always click the little calendar as well. Under the payments, you're going to see check, credit card, or bank payment. This is gonna be more like if it's an ACH, right? Click OK. So let's say that you're gonna use a check. You'd say check. You'd say to be printed if you actually wanna print it on a laser check. If you paid it virtually, you could say, or with a check number that you wanna assign, you'd say assign check number, and the other screen you'd enter the check number. Let me show you how you do it if it was a credit card, because that's a common question that I get asked. Because typically in my credit card training video, which I'll link above, I teach you how to enter, um, enter your credit card charges here, but if you do have a bill that you are paying and used as a bill payment, you don't wanna enter it here, because it will have it in twice, okay? So let's show you a credit card example, just in case. You're going to choose the credit card. Now you already have to have a credit card on file in your chart of accounts to be able to select it. If you don't have one, you'd wanna click add new and set up your credit card. So we'll go ahead and enter in our, our select the card we're using, pay selected bills. It's gonna pay only the ones you've checkmarked. And then it's gonna bring this up. You can say either pay more or print the bill stub, print it, or email now. So you can do different things with that depending on what you need. And then you can click done when you're done. Now when you go under that vendor, you will see if you're under, you click on it and you're under all transactions, you're going to see the bill and the bill payment, the card that you paid it down on. And if you went into that credit card, you'd see a charge for that and that would complete the whole process. Let me know if you had any ahas. Have you been entering bills? Are you going to use the bill feature or do you wanna save time by using some of the other features in QuickBooks? The other thing you wanna do is when you're in here, since we're already talking about vendors, you wanna make sure that the only vendors that have balances are vendors you actually owe. 
If you find that you have issues with that, I'd highly recommend checking out our Cleaning Up QuickBooks workshop. I'll link it up above and down below for you. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. If you'd like to receive these tips and tricks straight to your inbox, you can also go up above or down below and we'll send them to you so you never miss one. And if while I was talking about learning how to customize QuickBooks to your specific business, you were like, yes, I definitely want to do that, then I will link the workshop that we have available for that. So you can go up above and down below. I'd love to hear any ahas that you've had so or questions that I might not have answered. Post those below. And I look forward to seeing you inside my next tip and trick. Save this video so you can reference it in the future or share it with someone that you know who might need to enter a bill if a coworker needs it. And thank you so, so much for being here. Can't wait to see you soon. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you.